Okay, so let's have a look at um, question four now. So, uh, below is an attempt at writing a function that computes the length of a string. As written, it has three different bugs, allegedly on these lines. What are the bugs? Okay, so let's look at what this code is doing. So what I might do is um, copy it into the template below, so that way we have a um, nice syntax highlighting. So if we'll um, get rid of that, and we'll get rid of that, because we're going to have to do this in question 4.2 anyway. Cool. So what's going on here? So it takes in a char pointer called pointer. We initialize the count to be zero, and in fact, immediately uh, VS Coding was nice enough to tell me one of the bugs. Identifier count is undefined. And the reason why is because we haven't specified the type of count when we initialized it. So we can fix that by declaring count to be near. So that's, that's one of the bugs for free. So let's write that down. So what was the first bug? Um, count was not defined. The type of the count variable is not defined. Type of the count variable was not defined. And in fact, it tells us clearly state what the buggy lines we replace with. So we will replace with int count equals zero. Cool. Okay, that's one of the bugs done. Um, what else is it doing? So while the pointer is not zero, increase the count by one and increase the pointer by one, which will move it along to the next byte. Well, chars are, sorry, strings as just a char pointer to a null terminated character array. So here, I'm checking if the pointer is zero. What I really should be checking is if what the pointer points at is zero. So I really should put a star there. Okay, so the second problem is that the while loop condition checks if the pointer is zero rather than if the pointer is pointing at a zero. So replace with a while star pointer does not equal zero, uh, open left brace. Okay? And the third bug, what's this doing? Star pointer plus one, so we increment the counter, and then we increment the thing the pointer is pointing at by one. What I really should do is increment the pointer itself by one, so it moves to the next byte. So that, sh that should never start there. Okay, so let's write in bug C. Uh, the while loop increments the character itself, the character that the pointer is pointing at, rather than the pointer itself. If I can spell pointer. Okay, replace with, yikes, replace with uh, pointer plus equals one semicolon. Okay, so those are the three bugs. And so now with this function, okay, so question 4.2, uh, write at the length string function with all bugs removed. Um, I kind of just did that. Give an example how to correctly call this function from C main. Okay, so what have they given us? They've given us a pointer, a char pointer hello, which points out the memory address OX2, 100,000, whatever. That's the start of the dot data section. In fact, if we look in the main, there's a string here. So the, the char pointer hello points to this ASCII string hello with a capital H. So if I want to call the length string function, I can just type in length string and then give it that pointer as input. And if all is well, this should return the number five. Maybe that's something we should test. Maybe we'll do that right now. So we'll spin up the debugger and check that it's doing the right thing. Uh, main should be calling C main, and it does. That's good. Also, don't modify this file. OK, I won't do that. So let's spin up the debugger and see what happens. Uh, in fact, before I do that, I probably want to define a variable to put the result of length string in. So I'll define it to, so we'll stop that for a moment, actually. I'll declare, um, I don't know, int z. And then we can look at the value of z after the function's run. So we'll save that. And we'll spin up the debugger for the emulator, because I don't have my board plugged in. You should not. You should have your board plugged in. OK. Let's see what happens. Cool. OK. So we'll step into the cmain function. And instead of looking at the registers, now we can look at the variables. So here you can see I have a local variable z, which is initialized to some random garbage. We call the length string function 
on the pointer hello, which thankfully VS Codium is nice enough to tell me hello has this random value and points to the string hello. OK, so let's step into the function and see what it does. So we initialize count to be 0. While star pointer is not pointing at 0, maybe that's something I could watch. So I'll add that to the list of watched values. I'll look at the, what the value of star pointer is. In this case, star pointer is a capital H, because the pointer is pointing to the first character in the string. Sometimes it's useful to add things to the watch list so you can see the values in particular expressions. So it's not 0. So we enter the while loop. I increase count by 1, so count is now 1. And I increase the pointer by 1, so the pointer should point to the next character, which should be a lowercase e, and so it is. And also the pointer, the value pointer is increased by 1, so now it's pointed to the string hello, because the null terminator tells me where the string ends. So am I pointing at a 0? No, I'm not. So run the code again. Now I'm pointing at an L. Run the code again. Now I'm pointing at the second L. Run the code again. Now I'm pointing at the, sorry, now I'm pointing at the second L. And now I'm pointing at the O, which, so increase the count again, increase the pointer again. And now the pointer is pointing at a null character. So I should terminate from this while loop and return the value in count, which is indeed 5. And so when I go back to C main, the value of Z is 5. So it looks like that's doing the right thing. It's computing the length of the string. Cool, that's good. OK. Explain how the correct version of the length string function works. Well, I kind of just did that. Basically, how it works is it initializes a count variable to 0. And then while the pointer is not pointing at the null character, I increase the count by 1. And I move the pointer one byte down to the next character in the string. I keep doing that until I find the null character, at which point I return how many characters I've counted. So I better write that down. So we use the variable. Whoopsies. We use the uh, variable count to count the number of bytes seen. Uh, the length string function takes a pointer to a string and checks if the pointer is pointing at the null character. It's pointing at the null character. OK? Uh, if not, then we increment the counter. And we increment the pointer to point at the next character in the string. Pointer. That is why we're doing that, to point at the next character. Uh, until the null terminator is found. Uh, when it is. Uh, when it is, terminate and return the count variable. OK, cool. That's my description of how the length string function works. So let's move on. Question 4.4. Suppose we fix some bugs and not others. As stated below, describe as precisely as possible what the function will do when called as follows. If the code wigs out, we should specify why. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a copy of this function and move it down to where the answers are so I can sort of look at it at the same time. And then we can sort of answer these questions as we go. OK, so we fix all bugs except bug A. So what was bug A? Bug A was the type of the count variable was not defined. OK, so it's basically saying, what would the code do if I undid that fix? Well, the code won't even compile because it doesn't know the type of the count function. In fact, it gives me an error to that. So what does the code do? The code doesn't even compile. As it doesn't know the type of count. OK, so that one's a pretty boring one. The code, we can't even run it because it won't even compile in the first place. OK, so we'll put that one back. What does the second bug do? So what was the second bug? The second bug was um, we didn't have a star here in the while loop. OK, so it's as if I did this. So what does this function do? So it takes the string as input. While the first character is, n while the pointer is not null, increment the counter by 1, increment the pointer by 1. While the pointer is not null, increment the pointer. 
This is going to run for a very long time, right? We've been told that the pointer starts at memory address ox2 gajillion. So it's basically going to add one, and then add one, and then add one, and keep adding one until this number goes all the way to the very end at ox f f f f f f f f, and then roll around back to zero. In fact, it would be a good idea to test this. So what I might do is um, I'll comment this out. We don't want two copies of the length string function. I'll uh, undo the fix I did here. And we'll just run the function for the input hello, and we'll, we'll see what happens. That's a good way to test if my hypothesis is correct. So we'll run that. Give it a moment. It's a bit slow because I'm sort of recording my screen at the same time. Having a jolly good think. I'll try that again. Okay, we're in business. So let's um, let's step through the function and see what this new version now does. Okay, so we call the length string function. The value of pointer is ox2 gajillion. While the pointer, so let's add a watch variable for that. The value of pointer, not star pointer, is ox2 gajillion. It's not zero, so we'll put a breakpoint here. So we'll run the loop. And it's just going to keep running and running and running and running and running. So let's pause it. Let's count it up to a really large number. So we wrote one here. So we run that again. I'm just going to count up, and count up, count up again. And if we let that run for a bit, it'll just keep spinning in a loop for a very, very long time until the pointer eventually wraps back around to zero, because that's the, the condition under which it terminates. OK? So what does that tell us that the return value will be? Well, however many times this loop runs. So we better write that down. So what happens? Uh, the loop inside uh, length string will run adding one to the value, that, adding one to the pointer until the pointer itself is zero. Okay. Since the value of pointer starts at ox2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, this, how many times is it going to run? Well, I guess the last time it runs is when pointer is at ox ffffffffff. So it'll, we'll keep running, running the loop until pointer equals ox ffffffff. Is that the right number of f's? Should be eight f's. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then it should run the loop once more to get around to zero. Once more to get to zero, at which point the function terminates. And the output is how many times the loop run. Number of times the loop has run, which is going to be equal to, I guess, ox fffffff, fffffffff. Minus ox two zero 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 zero, and then sort of plus one afterwards because it runs the last loop again. So ox f f f f f f minus that is going to be ox uh, f e d so d f f f f f f f plus one, which is ox e one two three four five six seven. So the output is going to be this gargantuan number, whatever that is. OK, so this one's a bit of a tricky one, because basically the loop's going to spin and spin and spin until the pointer is 0. All right, and what was the last bug? The last bug was, so we'll fix that bug. That was a star. And then we'll undo this. So the last bug was star pointer equals 1. We kind of talked about what this would do before. It's going to take the value the pointer points at, and then add one to it. OK, so what does that look like in practice? Let's have a look. So we'll save this code and we'll run it again. Uh, there we go. So we step into the C main, call the string length function, count to zero. So while it's not pointing at a null character, add one to the count, and then add one to the first character of the string. I guess the character after h, a, b, c, d, f, g, h, i. So it's going to turn it into a capital I. 
and it's going to check is the capital I zero. No, it's going to call it again and turn it into a capital J, and it's going to keep going this, keep doing this until it rolls over back to a zero. So in fact, what we can do is we're going to cheat a bit and put a breakpoint here, and then just run this loop until it escapes the loop, and then we can look at the value account. So it looks like we had to increment it 184 times. But why is that? Because the original value of pointer, which was a capital H, is in the ASCII table. Capital H is 72. And 72 plus 184, what's that? Python 3. Uh, 70, I forgot what the number was immediately, I'm sorry. Uh, 72, cool. So 72 plus 184 is 256, which for a byte wraps back around to zero. So it looks like it just keeps adding one to capital H until it wraps back around to a null character, at which point the code terminates. So we better write that down. And uh, here. So the function will increment the first character in the list uh, until it wraps back around to a zero, and the function returns the number of increments that were performed. Returns the number of increments. Uh, for the case where the input is the string hello, with a capital H on the front, uh, the output is the number of times we can increment the character capital H. Or if you prefer, uh, the number uh, 72 uh, until we hit 256, which is too big to fit in a byte, so that wraps back around to zero which is 184 times. Okay, that's a pretty good description of well, precisely what the function does for that input if we don't fix uh, the last bug. Okay, and I believe that's all of question four. Um, yep, so it is. Cool, too easy.